after the deviation is thrown in. Do you want to sit down? Yeah. Can you hear him? Yeah. Well, I've said it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is... Your reason for Britain's got talent, actually. It's not <laughs> No, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've written this in support of, to do with cuts to uh, uh, our group, uh, which is a men's health action group, and it could apply to other groups as well. Um, but I, I just want to go back to what I was saying earlier, that when you start reading around in different papers and whatever, you find out this is happening in other counties in the country as well, it's not just here. So you've got, I think you've got to realise that, to, or I, I've realised that, you know, it's the government that's not putting enough money in. It's not just the CCGs and the counties, it's the government who's actually directly responsible for in this stuff, you know. Um, so anyway, this is a piece I've written, which I, I've actually written uh, mainly, originally, for um, uh, the mental health action group AGM, which is here in this building, in this room, on the 10th of October at 1 o'clock. And anyone wants to come along to that and join up, it's free but, uh, to join, whatever. So, so some of this is personal as well, because I've got a background, I'm actually on PIP, I'm, I'm on, you know, I've got um, I mental health and whatever things. But I've been involved with mental health groups and, and campaigns for quite a few years now. So I'll, I'll read this out, but if I need to come out of what I've written, I will do. Um, so can you hear me okay? Yes. I've been involved with mental health action group for over 10 years, and to hear that it is funny or see appalls me. I have long-term mental health conditions, but unlike other groups, it has a unique perspective and engagement that encourages and gives support and positive framework. It gives a voice to many people who thought they never would have a voice. It has great successes in campaigning and in education. Uh, I start with success in the transport group, and I'll leave it for my notes. This is to do with hidden disabilities and transport. Uh, we arranged a major conference with funding in uh, even from the government, from the coalition government in London, producing educational DVDs in disabilities for training bus drivers and train operators, and also in that infants on Olympic Games accessibility uh, programme. So, far from being a victim of mental health, I don't see myself as a victim, but it's given me confidence now to debate, to speak on issues in public, and to produce training, I've produced a training film for the NHS, um, include a number of issues, including appropriate use of restraint in mental health institutions, which is something that's been in the news very recently this week. And it gives voice to ordinary people, um, extraordinary stories to share, growing audiences that are concerned with health issues. In short, it's empowered people, including myself, to question and to down notions of what mental health is about, to challenge misconceptions, always in a constructive way, and to build partnerships over the years. When I first had mental health issues, I was totally isolated from, after the close bereavement of my wife and parents. <coughs> Years later, I saw a magazine at the doctors and, and at mental health action group. I went to meetings and got involved in campaigns and workshops and many engagements, including the transport group, the benefits <coughs> group, because we bombarded up with benefits things, you know, no one knows what we're about. So we, we had people coming to talk, we had guest speakers, people come and talk about it and uh, help. Um, and then uh, I went out to chair meetings, but it was also the comradeship of meeting people, people who felt isolated but came together in the common good. It led, for example, to me doing practical research work with a rail delivery group on even disabilities on rail and bus travel, and aircraft and whatever, submarines and bloody travel, you know. <laughs> this year, I was chosen by that organisation in London to go on a journey to Cornwall and to the artwork, which is currently travelling all over the UK, called No Boundaries. That comes from my involvement with Emma, directly or indirectly. From this group, I'm also on the regional committees of Rethink Mental Illness, and I work with the British Red Cross on loneliness campaign and dementia, including television work. I'm involved with the steering group for the Fedlin, Fed, Fedlin, Fed, Fledgling <coughs> Mental Health Together um, group, which has been axed very early in the infancy. Um, I'm now to, uh, proud to be a participant, an expert patient, 
run by Derbyshire's teaching hospitals uh, in Derby and Chesterfield to train 40 potential junior doctors on mental health awareness. And in conclusion, I will stress that these skills were built over the years and these bonds must not be thrown away and wasted. The mental health action group is needed like never before to illuminate injustices and to speak with the boys from the grassroots rather than being victims and to be told what is best for one from above and marginalised. A way must be found to flourish, protect and expand the work of this organisation. You know, it's got, I've noticed it's got worse politically, uh, you know, over the last few years. Uh, and somehow you've got to be able to bring or stupid or both, that's a stick head on the parapet about this. But we shouldn't feel ashamed, we shouldn't have stigma about it. We're all human beings and we've all got a right to a decent life. Okay, we've Uh, no, no, it's once a year. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's once a month you have a meeting. Yeah, yeah, I must say, yeah. The fact that the, uh, one of our, some of our members are here, I'm one of the organizers, I think the organizer there, we've got to have a speech in the break. Uh, we, uh, currently, uh, the best we can, we travel around Derbyshire to different locations once a month. Uh, but we have an annual general meeting, which is going to be in this room next Wednesday, just tomorrow, if you come along. Any more questions, thoughts? Can I just ask a question here? Yeah. Regarding the mental health act, we know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But Nikki will probably answer this for me. <laughs> <laughs> How many members are there now of the, uh, the mental health action group, Nikki? Can you tell me? Well, less than the word before we had experienced our last cut. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem because. What a difference you have, you know, when your services are impacted and you're moved around, etc. Because of confidentiality, you always have to ask people's permission to take their details with you. And a lot of our members find that difficult. They're not, they're kind of people that will leave mail sitting around because they find it very important, they find it very difficult, so they become disconnected. So we've lost a lot of members because of all that process. Um, but I suppose that would be 50, so we're up to 200. Which is left now. Yeah. 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 But prior to that, that was double, if I remember right. Yeah. But the, uh, the group as it started was 25 years ago, and it started with seven members. But that has gradually got bigger and bigger, and we had something like 400 members throughout Derbyshire. Now that's just the mental health action group as a whole. Yeah. Uh, how many other, me other groups with their members are now being lost, you know, to all these cuts. That's, not, it's, that's a point I'm trying to make because Tony's already said, it's been said numerous times, these groups are the voice for the mental health service users and to, to make contact with uh, the services, the, the trust, uh, whoever, but they are the voice for yeah. it. Yes, I think and that is all being taken away. Mm. 
to a good point then, if you're one of the points I'm trying to get across really is that, you know, it's got more and more like that, you will do this, this is good for you, you know, uh, does he take sugar attitude, you know, it's like, we can think for ourselves, we can offer things, you know, I'm really, really proud to be an expert patient, and there's another one that's here, where we actually <coughs> help train the attitudes of future doctors, you know, and you try to tell that the DWP, because they want to even understand what you're talking about, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> But, um, Any more questions for Tony along those lines? I was going to say that, you know, I've been fortunate, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, fortunate as well that um, over the last few years I, I, I do a lot of artwork to do with mental health and I, I've been supported by the Arts Council and I'm, doing, I'm working on a big project on loneliness and mental health at the moment and, uh, you know, a lot of this does actually come through being the mental health action group which has given me the confidence and, and whatever to, to do things more, so um, I think I'll leave it at that really. You can ask me questions on the break, I'm sure you're trying to get up to Well, what I'm trying to do is, has anybody got any thoughts about how we proceed as an organisation or an organisation organisations together? I should make some suggestions. Michael. Okay. It's not, so much, sorry, sorry. not so much how to proceed, but it's just some information that you desperately need. Uh, people generally live there. Uh, mentioned the loss of 535 beds across Derbyshire. Now, out of that 55 are going to mental health beds, and my guess is that I think the 535 represents sort of a third of the total. That proportion, that 55, is going to be a much bigger fraction of what's already there for mental health. Now, we asked questions about. Uh, bed losses and ward growth, so this blank, the CCG is a blank, this is not its happening. But we know it's going to, we know it's going to happen. And I've heard many years actually got any information heard of specific examples of where mental health beds and wards are going to be closed. But I think we actually need to find out. I think that's part of where we go forward, just be as well informed as possible, because they certainly won't give us the information. Well, Kingsway is affordable, that will be shut down, the Derby. Kingsway, because that, that was a big thing. How the university had it. Well, we got to go to Oh, uh, can't remember, but it was quite a few years back. The university yeah. had it now, the research right. unit. And I, I do know the Padley Centre was shut down. And that was maybe. Alex. Yeah, that's this one, one way that we can help to get information to the um, commissioners is they, they spend so much money stupidly <laughs> that they send all these people out of area. Mm. And it costs twice as much to look after people out of area because normally they're sent to private hospitals. If they actually took a view that rather than cutting the beds, they actually recruited for the 22 people who are short at the right board centre and increased the beds and kept people in the community within Derbyshire, it would save more money than cutting the beds. But they will insist on saying, no, we don't have enough beds, we have to send out of an out of area, where it would be much cheaper if we actually increased the beds rather than cut them in the county itself. We'd save a huge amount of money. See, they spent, they spent £800,000 last year alone sending me out of county. How many people, or how many beds does that actually Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a ridiculous way that it's, it's a very, very good point, and it's related to the, the privatisation programme. And you've seen the same inside the health service in terms of our sourcing, stripping it to the bone, then you have to pay through the, through the whatever it is <laughs> in order to get well, people to, to make up the deficit. To be, to be fair, it's, there are various other problems. But in I want to be fair. In South Darkshire, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I know, I don't live in the city, I live in South Darkshire, they have not had a single psychiatrist for 13 <coughs> years. They live on locums. Mm. I have now seen it's eight crazy, eight, crazy, crazy. I have now seen eighty-eight psychiatrists. Oh, that cannot be sensible for my health. <laughs> it cannot be sensible for a budget because they're just paying for a new locum every single time. Can you remember the names? <laughs> Come on, don't. <laughs> uh, but it's ridiculous. There's something we something we have to do about Derbyshire. It is unique to Darbyshire. No, I don't believe it's unique. I'm going to shut down the meeting if you don't mind. One or two things. 
what's happening in Derbyshire is happening throughout the country. And the thing that changes it, and the only way we can do anything is ourselves do something. You can't expect other people to do the thing. Change has been made by people like ourselves making a noise, showing our anger, getting together, not only writing to MPs and things like that, but we need to go on marches, we need to do petitions. There's a whole range of things. We need to speak one way or another and to show our anger. That's the way that the NHS was built, and that's the way we can save the NHS and the mental health services. I'm sorry I'm preaching, I'm not allowing anybody to interrupt me from the pulpit. So what I'm urging that you get involved one way or another, we've suggested you go along to the mental health action group next, the next week. We will probably be setting up another meeting. We'll certainly be setting up more stuff about the consultation. We will probably be organizing some sort of march. We will certainly be handling in a petition with a head of a row. We need to contact the press. There's all sorts of jobs that need to be, to be done. I can't go through that list now, but what I'm saying is we need you to throw in your energies one way or another. When we finish, come <laughs> talk to some of us activists and we'll be able to identify some of the activists, just making sure that we know who you are and got ways of communicating. And on that note, I'm finishing. Hey. Thank you very much.